Welcome back. This is Sean's Take on Things. I am Sean Redman. I am your host. Uh, today we're talking about the fourth episode of Death and Other Details. This is your spoiler warning uh, from here on out. If you haven't seen the episode, beware. I will also be using clips from the show, as is allowed in the fair use provision of the copyright laws of 1976. So are we going to find out if Jules is his real name or which passport's the right one in the book of passports that he had? There's a lot to unpack. Sit back, relax, get a cup of coffee or a cocktail, and let's unpack this episode. We start off with, we see a flashback to Sonal, the owner of the ship, walking down an alley, talking on his iPhone and getting mugged. And Jules coming to his rescue. And this is how Jules got his interview to become head of security for the ship, for the Verunda. We'll, we're going to circle back to that in just a few minutes. On the boat, we see Hilda Erickson, the Interpol agent, begin the manhunt on the ship for Jules. Now, it's not that big of a ship, so manhunt shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't take long. And they do an interesting thing. They lock down the boat in sinew. Which, um, so everybody has to stay where they are. If you're on the sun deck, you have to stay on the sun deck. If you're in the bar, you have to stay in the bar. If you're in your cabin, if you're in somebody else's cabin, you have to stay there. So Anna has to stay with Eleanor. Uh, Anna was there to meet with Celia, the matriarch of the Chun family, and Eleanor. Um, Celia never showed up, and um, now they're locked down, and Eleanor and Anna are alone. We get out onto the deck where Catherine wants to leave the deck to go back to her cabin and being an entitled Karen about it. And Hilda, you know, puts her in her place. Money is no good in this situation, which of course Catherine says money is good in all situations, especially these. We see Tripp, who's always drinking or partying of some sort, getting a drink from Winnie, um, Teddy's sister. And, you know, Tripp takes a little run at her and says, you know, hey, I don't remember your name. And she says, it's because I never told it to you. And he said, can I ask? She said, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Walks away, never telling her name. So the, the, the Verunda, the ship, this ship, is sailing around the Mediterranean. Beautiful. Uh, I am currently sitting somewhere in the vicinity of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Where are you? Um, let me know in the comments where you are watching these videos from. I appreciate it. Anybody from the Mediterranean watching? Should we do a flashback? Um, Anna and Eleanor are talking, and Eleanor asks Anna if she knows who killed Trebinsky. And Anna flashes back to when she told her wife, Layla, about the murder. Layla had a very strange reaction, which makes Anna suspect foul play. Um, I think that's that's very interesting. But moving on, we catch up to Jules who, when last we saw him, was capturing Imogen. And here he finishes tying her to a pole. And, you know, she's talking. And without, you know, doing a blow-by-blow, blow, they end up, he ends up admitting to her what he's doing, lets her go. She promises to help him. And we find out that he's actually helping refugees flee the Ukraine. So there's a family stowing away on the ship. And that's why Jules wanted on the ship, so he could smuggle the people out. Imogen, being the detective that she is, notices the girl's knees are rusty. There's a little girl, and uh, Imogen looks, and there's rust on the vent. And she immediately knows that this girl has been leaving this room via that vent. So Imogen lets Jules know that she does not work alone, but she promises to help, and she won't turn him in. So she goes to the elevator and makes the painting askew, sending... A message to Rufus. Sort of like the message that she sent with the Joker from the deck of cards when she summoned Anna for drinks. So, so through her manhunt, Hilda Erickson finds the missing lawyer, Llewellyn, tied up in his closet or his wardrobe. Uh, and when I say tied up, I mean dominatrix tied up. So his dominatrix left him in the middle of a session. Rufus and Sunnel and Teddy are walking. They're, they're on their way. They get on the elevator, and Rufus sees the painting, and he fixes it and says, Oh, I'll meet you there. I have to go by my cabin. And leaves and goes and meets Imogen. And she says, Oh, you got my message. And of course, Teddy and Sunnel, Sunnel, never sure if I'm saying that right, follow him. But we don't actually know that yet. Um, Imogen tells Rufus about the stowaways, 
and that she's made promises that he has to keep that he can't violate. We we cut to the deck with Catherine, or not Catherine. We cut to the deck with um, Celia and Father Toby having a cocktail, and Celia lets him know that she knows that he's sleeping with Catherine and sets about to blackmail him. So down in the bowels of the ship, wherever that is, where the stowaways are, Sonal and Teddy catch up to Rufus and Imogen and see Jules there. Um, everybody decides to cooperate, and Imogen and Rufus and Jules go into the stowaways and talk to the girl, Yaiv, Yaiva, I think her name is. And Imogen is practicing her questioning. And I, I'm there's an editing thing that I'm not sure of between Rufus and Imogen, whether she's remembering him tell her how to question people or if he's actually telling her right then what she's doing. But she she does adjust her questioning. And in the end, the, the girl describes the woman she saw through the grating uh, because they were women's shoes with gold spikes. So after this, uh, this is, um, after this episode, tell me in the comments what you think the next really big twist is going to be. Um, you know, like finding the book of passports was a twist. Um, finding out that Trubinsky was Danny was a big twist. What's the next big one going to be after this episode? Not the one in this episode, but the next one. Like, uh, did this little girl actually crawl up and out into Trubinsky's cabin and kill him? Was it her? That would be a twist. What do you think the next big one's going to be? I think there's going to be two more and then whatever the big one is at the end. So that's... Uh, Let's get a conversation going about those. Rufus comes out of the stowaway's room and sees Teddy wearing black shoes with gold spikes. And they go have a conversation where it's revealed that Teddy is, in fact, the dominatrix. And she was at her client's. She was not with Danny. And Rufus believes her because he saw the wrist bruise. Um, so they decide to team up to find the truth. And in the meantime, back in Eleanor's quarters, um, after a cocktail, things loosen up a little bit, and Anna and Eleanor hook up. We don't know where Leela is, but that's definitely on. We do see Trip still hitting on Winnie, giving her the worst explanation of cryptocurrency ever. And then we see that Teddy, in cuffs, is put into the holding cell, and the lawyer... Llewellyn is let go. And he says, well, she didn't do it. He goes, Rufus goes out to the deck and announces to everybody that they may resume their activities, that the killer has been found, and that it was Teddy. And Winnie hears that, Teddy's sister, and she goes. We see Imogen talking to Helda about why is Teddy locked up, where is Rufus Coatsworth? Winnie walks in and says, she didn't do it because I did. And Helda says, oh, the staged arrest. Perfect. Well done. So now we know that Winnie did it. We sit and we find her story where she's, you know, offended by the rich. They take advantage. She hates everything. Uh, it seems pretty pat, her story, and not full of passion, which it would take to kill. And if you're going to kill rich people for being jerks, Trubitsky was a jerk, but he wasn't one of the rich people. The rich people are the people renting the boat. Uh, I think she is most likely not the killer. That's my two cents. I'm not buying it. A uh, staff member comes in and informs Agent Helga, Hilda Erickson, that they found stowaways, possibly stowaways. So everybody goes. Jules knows they're coming. They realize they're coming. And Jules gives Sonal and Imogen time to get the refugees off the boat. So he goes back and leads them on a chase, leads this agent on a chase while Sonal, Sonal and Imogen get the refugees to the wet deck into his boat and off the ship. Rufus comes to the wet deck, sees that the life jackets are gone, and is about to leave when he hears something, and he finds Leela hiding in a cabinet. She seems clearer than we've seen her before, and she asks Rufus if he knows the name Victor Sams. And of course he does. Victor Sams was the name that he connected to Imogen's mother's death 18 years ago, and now here it's coming up. And that's the end of the the episode. So, but oh boy, um, is Sunnel the owner of the ship? Is he Victor Sams? 
And why was she hiding? Why was she hiding in the wet deck? And don't forget, when she went there, she knew where the secret door was. And on her way, she took a knife and a rope and then went down. So what do we think that's going to lead to? Because they're on a little boat heading for shore, which is interesting that nobody that's working for Hilda Erickson saw the boat. As far as we know so far, <laughs> nobody saw that boat leaving the ship. So I'm not sure what I think the next big uh, twist is going to be. Of course, I think the next little twist is that Winnie didn't kill Danny. Uh, and of course, it wasn't Jules. Let me know what you think. Uh, that's it for this episode. It's getting good. We're halfway through. Oh, and he did say that. Rufus, the voiceover of Rufus did say, dear reader, uh, that if this was the murderer, we're only halfway through our story. Everything else would have to be footnotes. So it's not going to be Winnie. Who do you think it's going to be? That's it for me this time. I'm Sean. This was Sean Steak. See you next time. Uh -huh.